and P. What do you think? The city of Miami is a hotbed for film festivals, each one catering to a specific audience, with movie screenings, lectures, celebrities, and filmmakers. Some are expensive, some are high profile, and some are decades old. The Borscht Film Festival is nothing like these. We create the films. We are a group of artists, filmmakers, that get together, we commission the films, we work together for a full year or an extended period to make these shorts happen. And then at the end, we have a festival. But it's not really a regular festival. There's a film festival for, all, for almost anything you can think of. Um, so we thought we'd call it the Borscht Film Festival. Um, so when you look at it, it looks like a typo. It's F-L-I-M, but it's actually Films and Libations Indulging Land. The Flim. It was like, I was like, are you serious? Like, it's just too much. And Borsch kind of covered that uniqueness that we are. Like, what is Borsch? What does it have to do with what we're doing? Actually, it was violently opposed, and I ended up being completely shot down. I thought it was ridiculous. This sort of irreverence is built into the Borsch Film Festival's DNA. The inaugural event was hosted by a semi-functioning robot named Paris Hilton. The third festival was held at the Museum of Science Planetarium and featured space monkeys. And all of this goes back to how it started. It started in, at New World School of the Arts. It was a group of friends, myself, yeah, Travieso. And it was kind of a collaboration. You know, I'm a dancer, he was a playwright. We have like everything at that school. We have visual artists, we have vocalists, musical theater. And the idea was, what can we really collaborate with? And film seemed just like a natural platform for that. We gave each other challenges with which to make short films. And first year was each one needed to be six minutes, 66 seconds long. Um, had to be about the end of the world, plus a challenge. Like, it had to be filmed backwards or no dialogue. And it was our attempt to make this just explosion of voices. I mean, we had it covered the entire lobby with artwork of young Miami artists. That first year was an unquestioned success. Not long after, the core members dispersed, traveling across the country for college. Lucas found himself in New York City. The more I was there, the more I realized Miami was a really big inspiration for my artistic voice as a writer, as um, a filmmaker. And I realized that the group of young people that were in Miami, that were building something together, it's, it's exactly what I had left looking for. And that's when the focus of the festival shifted to Miami and to the native sons and daughters who were undeniably influenced by growing up in such a unique city. So the festival's a way to get these people not only thinking about Miami artistically, but also coming down to the city to work on it and sort of engage with the community that's already here. Uh, growing. And so it went. For the next few years, there would be meetings, assignments, and new obstacles. The filmmakers changed a bit, but the core remained the same. And while different, the festival always maintained its sense of play. Force is different this year because we have money. Um, the right people went to go see it last year. The Miami World Cinema Center decided to take us under their wing, and as a result, they're funding six of the films that we chose. Uh, we had an open call to all uh, screenwriters and directors in Miami under the age of 30, and uh, we had an overwhelming response, I think over 100 entries, but we could only produce six. I first heard of the Borscht Film Festival from a random email uh, about two days before the open call submission deadline, uh, and I just figured, hey, I've got this script sitting here, I've got a director's reel, let me just give it a shot. And John Kane was one of the people who, he came in and he sort of like left an impression he, uh, that, that was, I got a really good feeling about him. Then about three weeks to a month later, I got a phone call saying, well, we liked it, but uh, we're not sure if we can fund it. It was too expensive, it was too ambitious, but we want you to make it. I was like, well, what does that mean? Actually, John Kane didn't get in. So when we made we made our decisions, and uh, I made the call of John Kane. And I, I, in not so nice words, said, "Are you sure?" He got kind of angry. He was, uh, he he was basically, like, "What do you mean now? Are you sure? You don't want me to make this?" Well, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. And I hung up, and I kept thinking about it. I got a phone call back saying, "All right, you know, let's see what you can do." And what he's added to the project and to the festival is incredible. The film What the Tide Brought In is about a dead body that washes up to shore and is found by four children. And they each have their own fantastic story of who he was and how he came to be. Um, in reality, he turns out to be a, a, a Haitian refugee uh, struggling for, for freedom on Miami shores. What the Tide Brought In involved a crew of nearly 20, locations across Miami, rain towers, a boat full of extras, 
and a storm on the high seas. It had an estimated budget of over $80,000, but was made for less than one-tenth of that. Like the rest of the Borscht Film Festival, what the tie brought in was made through the passion of a few individuals and for the love of the city in which they live. What I like the most about the Borscht Film Festival is that we, we're really putting a spotlight on, on the true Miami. Because we are making films about Miami. That's essentially what we're doing and creating our kind of unique voice here. And for us, growing up and living here, we, we, know, we know it and we love it. This is our city, this is our home. And it's exciting that uh, we're, we can get away with what we get away with. To get more information about the Borscht Film Festival, check out borscht.info. The preceding program was a production of WLRN Public Television.